So, hi. Um, my name is Patrick, as some of you might know, and I'm in the Thor infrastructure team. Um, I'm mostly concerned these days with our infra cloud and sorry. Um, and why is it? And the security part of our infrastructure. Um, but we have been having some spam problems in the infrastructure, as some of you might know as well, because it's not very hidden. Um, so when I found this presentation, I was being kind of optimistic. The actual title of my spam, <laughs> or of my title, should have been how we are taking care of it, because unfortunately, it's still going up. So, at some point, we started getting some spam, like these kinds of track issues or these kinds of wiki pages with this repeated about 500 to 1,000 times. Um, the funny thing is they tend to use uh, a lot of, they created a lot of new users for that. And when they started out, they started very light, but at some point, we were starting to get graphs like these. This is the total number of users they were, that were created in the Fedora account system. At one point, we got a top of about 3,000 in a single day. Um, I will get to the coloring later, uh, because the coloring has something to do with our fight against it, but these are the amounts of spam we are talking about. And they were using each account for multiple things, so it's getting kind of ridiculous. So, it started with a couple of wiki pages, like up to 20 a day, and people would ping me in RC and say like, hey, we found spam. Um, can you please remove it and delete the user? And sure, let's do that. So I started doing that because for some reason I I get to be the the the, peop, the person that does a lot of these things and I just deleted them manually and went on with my day. Um, my I've had some experience of this before because the GNOME Wiki has the same issue, and now they found the GNOME Bugzilla, where I'm also a sysadmin. So. Yeah, I had some experience with them, but my experience with Fedora has been a bit more, has been going further than GNOME. Because at GNOME, like after a day or two, we decided to just uh, disable uh, edits for new users and they would have to go through someone to be validated. Um, so, at some point, they actually started increasing. Like, I would block and delete the content and block the user, and they would create new users and create new content. And the rate by which they were speeding up was insane. At one point, I was like, yeah, I cannot do this manually anymore. So I wrote a bunch of scripts that were very hacky. Um, and what I basically did is like one script that watches fed message, which is our message bus for all edits. A second script which checks whether it's likely spam. And then a third one that deals with the spam ones. Um, this ran fine for a bit of time. Like, it it did run, run for quite some time in the end, but it was getting kind of hard to maintain. And you can recognize it because it would say this kind of things in the uh, wiki deletion log by me and because I had to do this from a script my account is officially set on the Fedora wiki as a bot account which means that my changes no longer appear in the normal change logs <laughs> because otherwise my script would start to fail with you are hitting the rate limit yeah so um, this is what we did and while I was writing it, we were at a temporary CLA plus one 
For those of you who don't know, in Fedora, we when you create an account for logging into any of the Fedora systems, you need to have signed the Fedora contributor license agreement. And CLA plus one is our internal terminology for being in the CLA groups plus any one other group. And the other groups are contributing groups. So infrastructure or marketing or documentation. So this would mean that only people who are actually contributing to Fedora would be still able to log into the wiki because I was still, that was while I was writing the script because I couldn't catch up and I couldn't keep up. Um, so at one point it became ridiculous, like hundreds of accounts a day. Um, and that's when I decided to move to a set, a central system called Bassett. Maybe uh, for those of you who don't know it, that's like the second best small, uh, the dog that's smelling and tracking uh, the second best because the first one was already a piece of software. So we couldn't take that name, so we picked the second one. Um, so Bassett was a project which is still run by me only, well, it's it started by me and it's just a way to centralize all of our spam fighting because we are having a, a whole lot of track instances. We have our Fedora Wiki instance and then some other things and we don't want to have to maintain an anti-spam list for every single service on itself because then we would really need to um, have some scaling issues with that and um, adding it to new state things would be very tricky, like track. Um, so Bassett started with a bunch of plugins for MediaWiki and track, and it's now getting support for other things because of other systems that are also getting under spam attack, unfortunately. So Bassett, is set up in a pretty simple way from the begin. Well, it's set up in a way where you have a separation of concerns. You have the Bassett front end, which is a very small 50 line web application. It receives messages from the wiki and track and our account system about actions, wiki page edits, uh, track tickets, and new users that are being registered. And it passes it on to the best worker, which then determines a score uh, based on the content of the content of, of the action and some other information that it can gather from all around the infrastructure. The funny thing is, because they were scaling up the spam attacks, Bassett actually scales horizontally just as well, so we can scale with them. Because it sometimes takes time to process things, so we can scale too with them. So, as I said, what it does is it gets messages from Wiki and Trek and Fast and Gagur and other. Uh, things in infrastructure and it determines a score based on specific modules. For example, the content module, which is literally just checking for spam words. There's also details like if your username and your full name and your email address are pretty much exactly the same. We, From statistical analysis, we found that it's 97% sure you're a spammer. So that also adds to the spam score. All of those modules add some scores to the total and based on the, t the final score that you get, either it will just happily accept your message and let you go on your merry way or it will send 
your thing to the graveyard and delete your post and block your account. Or if it's not entirely sure, like you're in the middle, it will just send a message to the administrator saying, hey, I did not know what to do with this person. Could you please check manually? Fortunately, this happens less and less. Um, and we are getting better, but it's a train curve. So the process, what happens is that as soon as you register your account, it gets submitted to Bassett, which scores on it, which, may, which determines a score. And then either it, cre it allows creating your account, because FAS is one of the gating applications, meaning that until, as soon as you create your account, your account gets into a state which is called spam check waiting. That means that it has sent your account information to Bassett, but Bassett has not yet returned any information. At some point, Bassett will either uh, create, tell FAST to create your account, and you will get your welcome email with your initial password, or it will say block this and your status becomes spam check blocked. That is also where the coloring of the first graph comes in. If I can. Um, the green is the created accounts, and the purple is accounts that it closed <coughs> immediately as spam. So, as you can see, we have a reasonable number of new contributors per day, um, but there is like pretty much everything spam. Um, which kind of made me very sad, but yeah. So, let's say your account gets created because Bassett either said like, well, you're likely not a spammer or we couldn't determine it and an admin said like, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. But uh, as soon as you start filing a, uh, editing a wiki page or you start filing a bug and track, it will again send a message to Bassett with the information of what you entered in your message and um, your username. It will again score your content. Most of the spam so far has been caught by this, at least. If it's not caught in the first step, it will probably be caught by this one. When it detect, at that point, it either accepts your change because it thinks it's not spam and you will not notice it, or it will delete the content you just created, like the ticket or the wiki edits you made, and it will also block your FAST account, because, well, you're obviously a spammer, so we don't want you. Um, this mostly works, but sometimes things slip tr through, in which case we manually reteach Bassett because it has some, like it has a bunch of configuration for which words do not allow, but also it has some outer learning modules in there. Um, so, as I said, we are still continuing to teach it because it's not perfect yet. We've had both false positives and false negatives, unfortunately. So we've also had pages that it deleted which were actual contributors contributions. Sorry, we do our best, but sometimes it happens. Um, and we're now also working on deploying it into other services, like our uh, Fedora Tagger, for those who know it, and other things. And there's also other projects that are currently looking at deploying Bassett, like uh, the KDE project is one I'm working with and Reddit IT internally. I'm also talking with them to deploy this there because the spammers have also targeted the Fedora component on Reddit Bugzilla. Why not any of the Red Hat components? Why just the Fedora? 
Um, <laughs> ask the spammers. Oh, that's bizarre. I mean, they're also kernel order books. Sorry? They're also in the kernel order books. Not that anybody ever reads it, but right. It, it, yes. Yeah. Um, it might very <coughs> well also be going to Red Hat components, but I oh. I haven't seen that. I've all that I've seen is your components, which. So the theory why they are hitting or targeting us is because we have a pretty good search engine findability, meaning that if they get pages onto our website, okay. they will likely get into Google and other search engines. Um, so other projects are also starting to work on deploying it because there's other projects that are seeing the same issues with the same spammers and yeah, I'm try what I'm trying to do here is make a single effort to get rid of these spammers because I, I just want to get rid of them. I want to drive them out of business and I, will, I won't tell you what kind of words we're using during our meetings about them. I guess you can take an S, you can guess. Um, unfortunately, the wiki became so ridiculous with spam that at one point we had to decide that, yeah, um, it's working kind of, but for now we need to make it um, CLA plus one again, which for now has held up for a couple of weeks. We might revisit that, but um, and I, I really hope we can get rid of that limitation. But for now we kind of need to because it's getting ridiculous. As I showed you, about 3,000 new accounts per day because all of the accounts get blocked as soon as they create new spam. Um, and I would like to thank uh, Stephen Smoogin a lot for his help with this because he, while I was away, he took care of training Bassett and stopping it there. So we have some plans in motion for uh, other plans for getting rid of the spam. They're a work in progress. Uh, they will be shared with you when the time comes to deploy them, or not, if it's hidden. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to, if you have any suggestions, I am always open because I just want to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. And I will accept anyone's help who might have some idea of how to get rid of them. Um, are there any questions so far? I, I have some, but when I like register with the V, and then render the request and submit it to Basel to evaluate it with it, 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 its time or not. This is the after it's actually saved, and then right. the page is deleted, or is this like blocking the actual edit? No, it's reactive, not proactive. Yes, at this point it's reactive. We are, okay. I am working on making it proactive. Um, Does MediaWiki support that? Have some kind yes, of it has curated editing or something? Yes, you have a plug or you have a plugin hook point where you can say, uh, where you can accept or reject the save. Mm -hmm. The problem is the current architecture of Bassett makes it quite hard to implement this. Because I've explicitly separated the front end and the back end as much as possible because the back end has a lot of permissions on a lot of systems. So they currently only talk through a message bus. Right. But the message bus currently only goes one way. I'm working on making it also that the back end returns to the front end. Oh, I see what you're saying. The Bassett can't tell the wiki that no, don't do this. Right? Correct. Because the front end, which is what Wiki talks to, only drops a message mm -hmm. and then just stops right. everything. And then Bassett will go along and delete later. Yes. Like I'm working on a <coughs> synchronous API where it will wait for a second or some 
time to see if it gets a response from the worker. But that's kind of difficult to do. I'm still working on it. There is another option, which is to have those meeting wiki edits sit in a queue. No immediate feedback. Your update may be posted if it's not spam within the next five minutes or something, and then check those. But I don't know if media wiki allows that. It's basically like list moderation. You send right. a thing, it goes into a queue, the queue gets, I mean, obviously that confuses overlapping edits, but that's a problem yeah. anyway, so. Yeah, well, in wiki, that's kind of very tricky because of the API. It doesn't allow it. And it's written in PHP. <laughs> Don't remind me. It's the first time I've touched PHP in years. I'm lucky I w it, it was a very small right. thing that I had. Well, track has the same problem, though. It's just oh, don't talk about track. Track is horrible with its API. Right. But we're getting rid of it, so. Yes. Maybe. I will be very glad when we do, because it has a wiki, it has a ticket, yeah. and it has a roadmap feature, yeah. and all of them have an entirely different API. Just access it all. But what about your? Um, we are adding a DARE too. But the question is, does it have the opportunity to be proactive instead of reactive? Stop spam before it gets applied as opposed to? Um, we could do that, but we are likely going to use the syn synchronous API again. Okay. Because I have an idea of how to implement it, I just haven't had the time to well, of course you do. do it all. Clean up the spammers. So. Yes. And Bugzilla, I imagine, would be nearly impossible. Yeah. I, because you can't get that far in the Red Hat Bugzilla to allow it to. Um, yeah. Does Currently, it, Red Hat IT is, use, is using other plugins, but they are still having spam problems, and now they're considering deploying Bassett. Okay. But, but again, the bug would still have to be filed before. Yes. Well, I'm not sure about the API in Bugzilla whether it would allow yeah. accepting, rejecting. Probably not. But they could have had it. Is Red Hat going to want to let bugs be gated on some Fedora services? No, they would run it yeah. themselves. Like yeah. that. That was clear from the beginning because there's a lot of content. Uh, well, not just politics, but also. Um, Restricted. Oh, of course, that's right. All the that they yeah. really don't want to send our way. <sighs> Going back to back, you will actually work with a great reactive way because when you add a comment there, it sends a message to the message bus, and I believe that the, like, the text of the comment is sent to the message bus. So Correct. Even if you do it to the, to the afterwards, the message is still out there. <laughs> Something might have reacted to it, so you did like record a little bit somewhere. Right. You would have to go and maybe clean that afterwards. Right, I mean, well, it would have to sit after the, you click the submit button or the spot clicks the submit button. Yeah, so. And then wait until. We're not until. really worrying about the data number part because, well, data number, data grepper, because that is not next by Google or any search engine. And well, if it contains spam, then well, so still, be it. Still, if you consume arbitrary resources, not as an intentional DLS, but as I still file 10,000 comments, one of them is going to make it through, right? Yeah, yeah. and that's what the spammers are trying. Yeah. One funny thing, one funny story is that at one point we had a single ticket. Uh, a single track where they were creating a spam ticket, uh, Bassett would clean it up, they would create a new ticket which got the same ID because Bassett deleted it before oh. they could create the next one. One time they actually did that like 500 times in a row and at one point, at the end they just filed a ticket. How do I file a ticket against your software? <laughs> I was like, yeah, if you're not posting spam, you will get a ticket. Otherwise, no. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been a more than one person full-time job to take care of it. And that's the main reason we decided to go for CLA plus one <coughs> in the wiki for now. 
uh, does budget works also as a, as a service for Unbispar in your server? In what? Uh, I mean, do you use uh, in Fedora infrastructure? Do you use Bucket as an anti spam service for email server server? I mean, I can't hear the last word. Uh, email yeah. server and yeah. Bucket. Uh, do you use uh, Bucket as no. an anti spam service for your post it server? For oh, your right. Um, I have the plugins for that, but we're enabling that once we get the syn synchronous API because Postfix. As far as I know, it doesn't support saying hold on to this message for now until I come back to you. It does, actually. Well, it does. SMTP does, is the point. You right. can reject with 400. Right, but you can reject it, but for that I would need the synchronous API to be able to accept or reject at the moment the message comes in. Right, of course. So you're not, but even if you do that, you're not seeing this as a replacement for someone's fantasy. No, it would be an addition to because spam assassin does, does a reasonable job for most spam. It's only it were maintained. <laughs> I'm not going into that argument. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, where can I learn more about the machine learning that is using the best to identify spam? You can use in the repo. Some of the modules are in there. Um, there are, at, at this moment, two or three modules which are not open source. And the reason for that is because I don't want the spammers to learn what they do. Like I can tell you now that one of them is a Karma module which says like, if one person posted 50 non-spam items, the chance of your next thing being spam is quite low, but I'm not going to publish that because they are already sort of doing that. And currently they're just beneath the threshold for that to trigger. Well, if you could force the spammers to actually make useful contributions before they can start spamming, you can sort of... <laughs> you can use the contributions! <laughs> well, it doesn't see if it's useful only if it's non-spam. Yeah. I can show you a lot of tickets where they've done a lot of things. So if that's it, then thank you very much for listening. And if you have any ideas or whatever whatsoever, please come to me because I would love to ha to to just get rid of this whole problem. So thank you.